I'm Jill and this is Yester Kitchen and today it's part two of our very special Halloween edition and today we are going to make lollipops and let me tell you homemade lollipops are a little bit labor intensive but they are so much better than store bought lollipops. First of all they taste better, they taste fresher and you can make your own colors and your own flavors or no flavors at all. I'm going to show you the base and I'm going to show you what we can do with it. So today's recipe comes from one of my favorites, my 1962 version of Better Homes and Gardens cookbook. And they actually have a recipe, a whole section on candy. And I have been making these lollipops for many, many years. And it's really, the, the hardest part about making lollipops is getting it to the right temperature. So I'm gonna start with um, just showing you a little bit of a candy thermometer for those of you that haven't made candy before. So here's a little lesson. This, my friends, is a candy thermometer. This looks like a giant thermometer. Today, we are gonna to wanna to get our candy all the way up to 300. So as you can see, it's got a long way to go. And so when I say it's just time consuming, it's pretty much gonna take a long time for sugar to get up to that temperature. Really what's going on is all the water is coming out of the sugar. And so that just takes a long time. And to get to a lollipop, the very, very hard stage, is called the hard crack stage. We're gonna to get to that in a minute. And if you don't have a candy thermometer, don't worry, I got you covered with probably Probably a better test anyway. So yes, it's Halloween, and yes, I'm in my flying squirrel costume. Yes, you've seen it before. You haven't seen it before? But for now, let's make some light pops. It's Halloween, I gotta dress up. So we're gonna get started by putting our candy thermometer right on the pot. And what we want, and I'm not gonna be able to show you this thermometer after, because it's gonna be too hard to, um, too hard to pull out with the hot sugar, so that's why I showed you where we're aiming for at the beginning. So what you want is you want about, about two fingers, let me see that, about two fingers above the bottom because you really don't want that bottom touching, so you don't want a, the thermometer touching the bottom because then it's just not gonna rewrite. So lollipops really are very simple. They're just, it's just a waiting game, but that's what cocktails and snacks and friends coming over and TV shows are for. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get a pretty large soft pan and we're gonna put three cups of sugar in it. Yes, three cups. Of course, it's candy. Okay, and now we're gonna take a third a cup of boiling water. Start hearing it going. There it goes. Two tablespoons of vinegar, and that's your know, own vinegar. That's just gonna balance out the sweetness. It's not gonna be a vinegary thing, although there is something called vinegar candy, which is a very similar recipe than this, but that's for another day. And the last thing we're gonna do is three quarters of a cup of light corn syrup. And when I measured it, I did do my trick where I sprayed the measuring cup with cooking spray so it doesn't stick. And I did the same thing with this. And so that's why it comes out really nicely. Okay, so all we're gonna do is we're gonna start by stirring it up. And what I like to do with lollipops, especially around Halloween, you know, Halloween's all about disguises and not being really who you are. So I like to match the color with something completely unexpected with the flavor. So that's kind of what I do for Halloween. Who is my friend? We'll get to her later. So we have a quarter cup of butter, which is a half a stick at the ready. And I'm just letting this go. And I'm using, oh, I don't, yeah, I'm gonna open it. I'm using candy food coloring paste. Can you see it? It's not a liquid, it's kind of a paste. But, and of course we're using jet black because it is Halloween after all. But you don't have to. If you have that leftover food coloring from Easter eggs or turning beer green on St. Patrick's Day, you can go ahead and use those. It's just, this is more concentrated so you use less. And the other is less so you use more. Same difference. So for flavoring, I use flavored oils, candy oils, such as these. And these are in little bottles that are in measurements called drams. And this is very, very common. I use a company called Loran Oils, and I'm just, I'll give you the link down below. I do, they do not support me. They don't even know I exist, but I happen to love their products. So I'm gonna share it with you. They have a bazillion different flavors. Today, I'm using raspberry and I'm using Bavarian cream and mixing them together because I think the Bavarian cream is gonna kind of mellow out the raspberry. And who's gonna expect that with a black candy? So we're gonna start stirring this. 
And the first thing you want it to do is come up to a boil. So we'll get back when it's boiling. So we're starting to come to a boil. Take a look, you can just see some of those bubbles starting to form. And I will give you another tip. Use a wooden spoon because metal will conduct heat a little too much. So use a wooden spoon and use like a little throwaway wooden spoon because you're not gonna want it, you don't have to throw it away, but it's probably gonna absorb the color from your food coloring. So I don't know if you're gonna get it back to the wood color. So don't use a very expensive one, just go get a cheap one. And I will tell you cleaning up is really easy. I, when it turns to the stage that we're making lollipops, it is gonna be a sticky, sticky situation. But it's sugar and sugar will dissolve with water. So never fear, your pots will be fine, your spoons will be fine. It's just that your spoon might be a nice Halloween color. So here's the name of the game. We started to come to a boil and you really need to babysit this. So um, once it starts really boiling, you're gonna wanna turn it all the way down to low because there's a really good chance your sugar is gonna come up and overboil, and that you really don't want because that will be a mess. You wanna kind of keep your boils right it's gonna, it's gonna rise, so, so you wanna keep a boil like right below the surface of the rim of the pot. And you can stir it off, and this is gonna take about an hour because it takes a long time for all that sugar to release its moisture. And it's really, really important that you get it to the right stage or else it's gonna be not as hard and crackable as normal lollipops, or your average lollipops, so, and you want that. The last batch I made, I let it go just a little bit under. I actually realized my candy thermometer was off because I didn't do my cold water test. And I took it off and they're, I'll show you in a minute, but they're like a little floppy. So this time I really wanna use my cold water test. So while this is coming to a boil, I'm gonna take a little tiny bowl, fill it with water and put an ice cube in it and just let it sit. If you see that ice cube melt, throw another one in there. You just want really cold water for when you're ready for it, but we're not anywhere near ready for it. So take a look. See, look at this, it's starting to come to a boil, and I will tell you, by the time your hour's up, this is gonna be more of a brown mixture because the sugar is gonna caramelize a bit, but it's still, <laughs> these are so good. These are so much better than store-bought lollipops, and you get to create them yourself, and your kids will love them. Your coworkers will love them, your spouse will love them, your friends will love them. Do yourself a favor, make homemade lollipops. All right, so we're gonna wait about, we're gonna babysit this thing for about an hour, until we see it come up to 300 temperature. When I see the 300, I'll come back, I'll show you the cold water test so we can make sure it's really 300 and we're gonna make some lollipops and we're gonna make some broken glass candy. Be back. Hey, so it's not done yet, but I wanted to pop it. It's been about 20 minutes, take a look. See, we're still bubbling away and it's just really a game of, you know, if, if your bubbles are starting to get too high, turn the fire down. If they're starting to just really not simmer at all, turn the fire up. That's why you need to babysit it. You don't have to sit and stare at it constantly and stir it constantly. You just need to watch it and make sure it's not gonna bubble over. And I will tell you, there is a very big difference between cooking on electricity and cooking on gas. I always cook on gas, that's my normal stove, but this is electricity and I'm noticing that I can keep the, the um, heat up a little bit higher. I'm still watching it, but I can just turn the heat up a little bit higher and it's still, this is at number four for an electric top cooktop and it is behaving beautifully. So here's what I'm talking about. I wanted to just break in and show you this test. So this is called the cold water test and there's about six or seven stages of candy. There's, it goes from softball to hard crack and it all depends on what you're making, like fudge would be on the softer side, lollipops are definitely at the top of the scale of the hard crack. So we're gonna take a little tiny cup of water, very cold, actually there's, a, there's still a little piece of ice and they're melting as you can see. So it's super cold. And what you're gonna do, you're just gonna take a tiny, tiny bit of your magic sugar and pour it in. And then you're gonna, because that's just gonna cool it off really quick. And you're gonna see what it does. So as you can see, as we pull it out, I really don't want water to go in there. It is, it's definitely hardening up, but it's very, very, very flexible. So that's like about the medium softball stage. We need to go higher. Right now it is, my temperature is telling me it's at about 255 and I think this is on the low side. So when we come back, we're gonna give it its final test. When we pour a little bit in, we just want the sugar to just crack. So we'll be back. Okay, so it's been about 45 minutes. I'm actually really surprised. I have never cooked candy on electricity and it went faster. So back to my, you gotta babysit it because you just never know. Candy, it's a temperamental breed. So, but we are there. We're actually a little bit above 300 and take a look. Look at this gorgeous, see I told you the sugar would caramelize. 
and it has done so beautifully and it has this beautiful, beautiful golden caramel color. But now the all important test. So I have a cup of very cold water that I literally just took an ice cube out of. And I'm gonna pour some right in there. I'm gonna get this out of the way so I can show you. So now we're gonna go ahead and grab them. And as you can see, can you hear that? It's just cracking, which is what you want a lollipop to do. So the next step is you wanna get this, before you do anything else, you wanna get the saucepan off the heat. So I'm gonna take that and completely out of the way. I'm gonna remove candy thermometer. Thank you very much. You've done a great job for us. And we're going to add a quarter cup of butter and a dash of salt. Literally, just a few grains. Dash of salt. And we're going to mix that together. Yep. And there it comes alive. This is very Halloween. And another reason I use the wooden spoon as opposed to metal is so I can keep the spoon in the candy mix the entire mixing time. So I have to take it in and out and in and out because wood just doesn't conduct heat. So you're not gonna burn yourself. All right, so now I said we're gonna do black and it's time. So I have the black paste color, but like I said, use whatever you have. And I'm gonna take a tiny bit out. That's probably more than we need, but it doesn't matter. That's such a dark color anyway. And we're just going to turn this to a very, very dark Halloween color. And with, if you're using other, um, that was maybe about a half a teaspoon. If you're using regular food coloring, just keep adding drops until you get the color you like. Seriously, it's that easy. And in the meantime, I have a kettle of water warming on my stove because that is the easiest way to clean up after. As soon as everything's done and out of the pan, you just pour hot water in and you let the hot water dissolve the sugar and then you just watch it, wash it. <laughs> All right, so now take a look. It is, ooh, it is Halloween. So now I'm gonna take my two food flavoring oils. Ah, here goes the barbarian cream. And these are just perfect sizes. And here goes the raspberry. I love doing this. Okay, and then you mix that very, very well. And then you're gonna to have to wait a little bit for it to cool down until it's slightly thickened because right now if we put it on our lollipop sticks, it's just gonna go bleep. And you don't want that, you want it to drop and kind of stop. So I am not even, since I'm being surprised on times today, I'm not even gonna give you the time that I normally wait. I'm gonna time it and I'm gonna let you know what it looks like when we're done. I mean, how much time it was when we're done. Okay, so a lot of stuff showed up on our board. So let's get to work. We have everything ready. As you can see, this is slightly thickened. It's just, you gotta feel it. It's gonna be hard to see, but when you can just feel like some resistance to your sugar mixture, and the sum is kinda starting to glob on the spoon, that's when you know you're done. Okay, so let me do a little switcheroo. And what I have here is a cookie sheet. And in this recipe, Cooking spray is your best friend. Now, if you want, you can use a Silpat mat, just like this one, but I know a lot of people don't have Silpats, um, which is just, it's a silicone mat and things don't stick to it. It's great for baking and candy making and all kinds of fun things. But I'm gonna go old school since this is Yester Kitchen. And I've greased, well, I've got so much stuff. I've greased my cookie sheet and I just buy lollipop sticks just like that. And I just keep them and whenever I make lollipops, I take them out, but they're just, you can buy them at a craft store, online, they're very easy to find. So I have these a couple inches apart, and now we're gonna start the magic. Not yet, but we'll get to this. So, this pan is still hot, and I wanna just stir in from the bottom. And now I'm gonna take a teaspoon. And I'm gonna just make a lollipop on each one. And I'm gonna try my absolute best to do this for you 
on the camera so you can see very well what I'm doing. And see, since we're at that hard crack stage, it just kind of stays put. Now these are homemade lollipops. <laughs> so of course you're gonna get little drags of candy. They're not gonna be perfect. And I will be right back when they're all done. Okay, I've got one more to go. And as you can see, I didn't do the neatest job, but the best thing is these are lollipops. So at the very end, if you have a few little stragglers on one side and they bug you, you just crack them off because you let your candy get to that perfect hard crack stage. And I know you're looking at the pot and going, oh my God, what a mess. Well, yes, it is. <laughs> but like I keep saying, sugar melts, this is really no big of a deal. Okay, so that's the first option we have. We have these gorgeous lollipops. They're gonna take about an hour to cool. Just don't touch them, leave them alone, have your patience. And we're gonna put these aside and we're gonna make some stained glass candy. So what I've got is I've got a cookie sheet. Yes, it's old, but I promise you it's impeccably clean. It's just been my best friend for a very long time. And we are gonna spray it insanely well with cooking spray. Okay. And then really what we're gonna do, now this is the second option. You don't have to do this. You can make all lollipops if you want. If you don't have patience for all lollipops, stained glass candy is the way to go. So you take the rest of your lollipop mixture and you just pour it all onto your cookie sheet. And this is gonna do the same effect as lollipops. It's gonna harden and turn into one ginormous lollipop. And when you do that, you're gonna crack it. Hence the name, stained glass candy. Okay, so we just poured the rest out onto this cookie sheet, and as you can see, it didn't quite cover up the entire cookie sheet, but it's just, you just let it do what it wants to do. Now, I made a cup batch yesterday, so I'm gonna show you because this is gonna take a while to cool off. Let me show you what I did. So I made lollipops, and I made beautiful bright green, and I made beautiful dark blue. So the dark blue are actually green apple, and the green are actually banana. Ha <laughs> ha, go figure. So. The way I like to serve it, and now we're gonna bring in our friend. Hmm, she doesn't have a name. I'm gonna give her the same name as my car. This is Betty. Is you take your lollipops, and I want you to see this. I let these go a little, not quite to 300. And as you can see, they're holding their shape, but they are pliable. So they're still perfect, they're still, I mean, they're still gonna taste delicious. They still have that buttery, sugary goodness. They're just like, if you put them next to each other, they might, they might, spread a little bit and stick to each other. But anyway, this is how I like to serve Halloween lollipops. Just kind of put them wherever and give her a little crown. Or you can take a bamboo skewer and just make holes. And then you don't have to worry about making with the lollipop stick. I'll go right in, Betty will have a crown, and then everyone just has whatever they want. So that's good for now, for this. Here, I'll make one more. And by the way, I bought this at the same craft store that I bought the lollipop sticks at. So here we go. That's how I like it. By the time I'm done, her whole head will be covered in lollipops. But here's my stained glass that I want you to see. So I keep it in wax paper because it's not gonna stick. And here is my beautiful, can you see the blue and green colors? Such pretty. I just rolled them together. I took two pots with two different colors and flavors and poured them both at the same time on my cookie sheet. So you wanna break this up and it's gonna shatter. So we're gonna cover it with foil and we're gonna use a meat tenderizer. Don't, just gently smash it. And there it goes. I think it's done because it's shooting everywhere. Oh, and look at that. We have stained glass. Now the way I like to serve it is just in a bowl. This bowl is from the 1970s. I am absolutely in love with it. Now what you want to do, because as soon as you put it in the bowl, it's going to all stick together, is I have a pie plate full of powdered sugar. And here's my bowl. So I'm going to take a couple pieces and drop them in the powdered sugar. And then, Kind of roll them around a little bit 
and that gives them a little coating. So I'm gonna just dust them off. And I will tell you that the powdered sugar is gonna absorb into it, but what's a little more sugar when you already have this much? Because yes, corn syrup is sugar, no matter what the commercials want you to think. Okay, so we'll just do a few more. Kind of just dust them a little bit. So yeah, it's a little messy, <laughs> it's fun. So there we go. That, my friends, is homemade lollipops. Yeah, it's a little bit, I wouldn't say it's labor intensive, I would say it's just a time, time intensive. That sounds better. Halloween is a great time to make lollipops, especially when the kids are getting all the packaged candies. Give them something from your home. Give them something from the heart. They're gonna thank you for it. If you would like to explore more dishes from your childhood or just the past, I invite you to subscribe. I release new videos every Friday. In the meantime, here's a few more retro dishes for you. And remember, every dish, even homemade lollipops for Halloween, has a story. I'll see you in the next video. 